In this video, we will discuss the basics of integrated rate laws and how integrated rate laws are different from differential rate laws. And the basic difference between the two is that integrated rate laws are used when you are given time data. When you are given specific time data, that is when you will use an integrated rate law. And um, if you want to know how long a reaction needs to proceed before you have a certain concentration, you'll use an integrated rate law. And oftentimes we'll use graphs to help us out. And when we do have a graph, the rate constant will be equal to the absolute value of the slope. And so um, what we can derive from that is that uh, k, the rate constant, and that's a little k, is always positive then. Okay, so the table down here is a summary of first, or zero first and second order reactions um, where we have some sort of reactant A, and we will see that in our AP formula sheet. They will use A as some sort of reactant, so don't be thrown by that. And um, with these orders, we have zero first and second, and so we can write generic rate laws. And from that, we could graph concentration versus time. And if it's a zero order reaction, that gives us a graph that looks something like this, and it's nice and linear. And that means that we can have a y equals mx plus b equation where the concentration y is equal to some slope, and that's uh, m, our x-axis is time, and our y-intercept is a naught. And this stands for our initial concentration. So that is where our graph started. Okay, and that would be specifically this point right there. Okay. And that's nice for a zero order process. It gives us a nice uh, straight line, and that means it's easy algebra for us, which is what we what we kind of like. Okay, so um, now let's look at a first order reaction. And a first order reaction would have a rate law that looks like this. And we would graph concentration versus time. And I know right now it says natural log. And I want to show you what it would look like if we had just concentration versus time, but it was a first order process. What we would get is a graph, an exponential decay graph, and that's not going to be easy math for us to do. And so it turns out that if we take the natural log of an exponential function, we may get a straight line if it's first order. And so that's what we've done. We have taken the natural log, and so our y-axis is natural log of a, so that's y. Our slope, the absolute value of our slope is still k. Our x-axis is still time, and maybe I could add there in seconds. And then our initial, that's what a naught means, initial, is going to be the natural log there. So that's just a y-intercept, and we can call that b. And then if we go and we look at second order, um, the same thing is going to be true. If I had a second order process and I just graphed concentration versus time, which this y-axis is not concentration versus time because it's the inverse of concentration or one over concentration. And so what we would end up getting is we'd get an exponential growth function and that is not too nice to work with as far as the math is concerned. So what we can do to make it more linear with our data is we can have uh, one over concentration and we get a y equals mx plus b equation. And so it is important that you understand these 
axes, that if I have concentration versus time and it gives me a linear relationship, that means it is just zero order. If I have the natural log of the concentration versus time and it gives me a straight line, that means it must be a first order process. And if I am given one over concentration versus time and it gives me a straight line, that must mean it's a second order process. So if we were to be given a second order process and we did and we didn't know it was second order just yet and we graphed it here is what we would end up with is we would have a graph looking like this and then for the first order we'd have a graph looking like this and then our second order graph our our one over concentration versus time would give us a straight line and it would be very clear to us that it was in fact a second order process. Okay, if we look at the AP Chemistry uh, formula sheet, they give us these, except they don't tell us what everything is. I've written here what everything is, but the AP people, they do not let you know. So one way I remember this is if we can remember on the kinetic section, it's just one, two, one. Okay, one, two, one, and then we'll know exactly what each of them is. Okay, so in this first example, we are given hydrogen iodide, and um, it says that hydrogen iodide decays through a second order process to its elements, just hydrogen and iodine, and that's important that it's a second order process. And the rate constant is 2.4 times 10 to the minus 21 uh, per molarity per second. And at 25 degrees Celsius, again, they're just giving us the temperature because that's the only time or the only temperature in which the rate constant is true. If we are asked to solve for the half-life, and if we have 0.2 molar of HI, okay. So what I can do is I can scroll up to my second order process, and I am given this formula that the half-life is 1 divided by K times the initial concentration. Remember, A0 is initial concentration or initial molarity. So I'm going to go down and I am going to write that formula. That is T1 half, or the half-life, is equal to 1 divided by K times A0. And then I'm going to plug in what I know. Um, I'm solving for half-life, so I don't know that just yet. Uh, the rate constant, they tell me, is 2.40 times 10 to the minus 21. Molarity minus 1, seconds minus 1. And then the initial molarity is 0 0.200 molar. And so when I math that out in my calculator, I actually get 2.08 times 10 to the 21st seconds, indicating that this is a pretty fast reaction. What you may be asking, though, is that if I look at my AP formula sheet, and that's what I'm given on the test, I don't have this formula. So how could I get that? And I'll show you. Um, let me move some things around and make some room. But what we would do is we would just use the integrated rate law for a second order process. And that is going to be 1 over a t, and that is concentration of a, just whatever you're dealing with, after some time. And you never know really what the time is. Here it's going to be the half-life and then minus 1 over the initial equals kt. And if we rearrange that, we would actually get the y equals mx plus b equation if we added over 1 over a sub 0. But there's no need to do that here just because uh, we'll end up doing it to solve it. So what I end up with is I know that my initial is 0.2 molar. And I know k is... 2.40 times 10 to the minus 21. Molarity minus 1, seconds minus 1. And I'm solving for this half-life. So what I've got to think about is if I'm solving for the half-life, 
or the time it takes for half of my HI to decompose. If I start with 0.2 molar, well, after that one half-life, that's going to turn into 0 0.10 molar. And so I can math this out. It might be a little bit uglier than the one on the left, but I actually end up getting the same answer. And I get 2.08 times 10 to the 21st seconds. Okay, so either way, uh, you'll get the same answer. I like this second way because I'm just using what I'm given on the AP uh, formula sheet. Okay, so we're gonna flip down and we're gonna do one more example. It's kind of a lengthy one, but it, it summarizes exactly what we need to know with um, integrated rate loss. So what I've been given is this is real data that we have collected in my lab and uh, we have some time and we have some concentration. And what I can do is I can graph uh, concentration of N2O5 versus the seconds or the minutes. So we'll say versus time. And if it gives me a graph that looks like this, then I know it's zero order. Okay, but we don't always have zero order. What we could have is we could have ln versus time, ln of N205 versus time to give me a straight line. And if it gives me a straight line, then that means that it's first order. Whereas if I just graphed concentration and if it was first order, it would not have given me a, a straight line. But sometimes we have things that are second order. So I might need to graph one divided by concentration and that would give me a straight line that looks like this. And so what I want to do is I want to come up and I want to get each of these. And if you're following along, you'll probably need to pause the video to solve these. What I've left blank here is we are going to calculate the natural log of this concentration and then one divided by this concentration. So I've gone through, go ahead, pause the video if you're following along but um, I will add in the values here. I'm just using my calculator to do so. And then what I've done is I'm going to graph I am going to take time, and time needs to go on your x-axis, versus y, y, and y, and those will be y's for three separate graphs. And I'm going to graph these, okay? And I've done that below on the next page. And what I end up with is my first, or my first graph is in 205 versus time. That looks pretty linear, but I've actually gone ahead and done this on Excel, and what I end up with is it's not super clear, but I end up with a sort of curve. And so that means it is not zero order, because that's not linear. Okay, and then on my second graph, I've done natural log concentration versus time. And when I've graphed those, I actually did graph them on Excel. I know it doesn't seem like it. Uh, I get a pretty linear relationship. So that looks linear. Um, right now I'm thinking it may be first order. Okay, so now I'm going to go look at my last graph and I'm going to see what it looks like. And it looks pretty linear, but in fact when I plug this into Excel and on a test or quiz, it would be a lot clearer that that is exponential growth, and so this means that it could not be second order. Okay, so what I know is that this is not maybe first order, it is first order because I got a linear relationship. Okay, so when it asks me to determine the rate law from this data above, that's gonna be a first order, so rate is equal to some constant k and we can solve for that later. And um, times n205 to the first power. 
If I wanted to determine the integrated rate law, all I would do is I'd look at my formula sheet where we have information about first order. And all I would do is that same formula except replace A with N205. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And this first one is after some amount of time T minus the initial concentration, the natural log of it, equals minus KT. And then in this next one, I'm asked to determine the, at, the value of the rate constant. And what I could do is I could use Excel and uh, use the slope of my line. But I don't have Excel open on here. And there's another way we could do it. What we could do is use the integrated rate formula. And hopefully you see that if we're going to use this formula, we need to know everything except for K. Well, luckily, I have some data here. And let's just pick uh, the first row and the last row. That'll give us the most uh, time coverage. And I know that the natural log of N205 after some amount of time was 0. Negative, excuse me, negative 0 0.329. The initial, or when I started, was 0 0.732. That equals K, negative K, after some time. And a lot of chemistry students will use 31.28 seconds. But if you look, this data started at 3.07 seconds. So I really need the difference between those. And so I'm going to take 31.28 seconds minus 3.07 seconds. And I'm going to plug all of this into my calculator. And what k ends up being is 0 0.0376. And it's first order, so that would just be seconds to the minus 1 power. And that is my answer. When they ask about what N205 was at 0 minutes. I don't have that information because the first time I have information is at 3 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the integrated rate law and I have it right here. And uh, what the time is going to be is 0 minutes to 31.8 and I've made a, a minor mistake. I'm going to go back and fix it. Hopefully you caught this. I'm used to doing kinetics information in seconds. However, everything that we're given is in minutes. So I need to go back down here and it's an easy fix, just minutes, minutes, and then not seconds to the minus one, but minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the natural log of uh, N205 at some time t. And all I'm gonna, I'm just gonna use the last one at 31.28 minutes, so that would be negative zero point three two nine minus the natural log of N two o five equals negative zero point zero three seven six. And the time that passes for that to occur from zero minutes is 31.28 minutes. And when I math this out, the concentration I get of N205 is going to be 2.33 molar. Okay.